Every 200 hours of flying, Vitorazzi recommends to replace the piston. And the piston comes, of course, with the piston rings, piston pin, and you will need to order separately the piston pin, roller bearing, and the gaskets for the cylinder head and the cylinder base. So in this video, we will show you how to do it and what to pay attention to. Let's get into it. Sure that you have springs and release the tension directly to the cable. Hi there, my name is Stefan. Welcome back to the Paramotor Engine Maintenance Series. As I told you before in this video, we will show you how to replace the piston and what to take into consideration when you need to order a new piston for your master that just flew for 200 hours. So, as you can see, here I have two new pistons and uh, one cylinder for demonstration purposes, which is a, a used cylinder. So, the very first thing that you need to take into consideration is the letter that you have engraved on the base of the cylinder. Probably you see it right here, I will attach a picture, that it's a letter A. Cylinders, as they came out of machining, they have slightly different diameters and according to the diameter from the smallest to the largest, Vitorazzi is engraving cylinders from A to E. So it's A, B, C, D, E. If you have a larger cylinder, you will need to have a larger piston. So of course the pistons have the same markings on them so we can have for instance this piston that i have into my hand is a c piston is a brand new this is a e piston and the difference in between usually are 0 0.02 millimeters in diameter these are the sizes that vitorazzi is kind of keeping the tolerances in so when ordering a new piston first what i would recommend is to open your engine and to measure a cylinder and if you cannot measure the cylinder then at least try to understand if the cylinder has a little bit of wear and you need to go with a little larger piston or you will just keep the same size as the letter that is engraved on your cylinder so based on my experience when you take the piston off and now i will attach some parts of the video that i will actually play later where i've changed the piston rings piston pin and piston pin roller bearing because it's the same operation you just need to install the new piston install of the old one so if you will take the piston out and you will find a lot of carbon deposits like brownish spots or even black spots with thick carbon below the piston rings that is a sign that the piston might be too worn or the cylinder is a little bit worn and the gases are going past piston rings and they are burning onto the piston of course the cylinder can give us some signs too i don't know if you can see in this uh, in this cylinder i will attach a picture on the walls here next to the intake ports you have some little brownish areas and this indicates to me that this cylinder is a little bit worn and although it's an a i would go with the b piston when replacing it at 200 hours of course the best and the most ideal would be to have a special tool to measure the cylinder and actually to measure if the cylinder warped anyway and it's oval, it's not perfectly round anymore. But if you don't have that tool and many of us don't because it's a very highly specialized tool, you just go after this sign. So based on this cylinder, I will go with the B piston, although the cylinder is an A. And if you don't have this kind of brownish marks and the cylinder looks still good and the piston looks still good, then I will go with the same size of the piston as the cylinder is. So for instance, if the cylinder is a C, I will go with a C piston. Or if the cylinder is an A, I will go with an A piston. And now, as I have already recorded the previous video with changing the piston rings and everything, I will just let Veronica play the other video and you will see how it's done. You just need to replace the piston. Don't put the old piston back like you will do at 100 hours but except that it's exactly the same operation. So now that you know how to select your piston and what are the signs that you may need a larger piston than the a size larger than the cylinder is, please feel free to go to our eShop, order your piston, order your parts. You have there everything you need. You have 100 hour kit, 200 hour kit that includes everything and you can start and do it by yourself watching this video. So. Veronica, hit it. First, let's remove the cooling shroud. And for that, we will need a six millimeter Allen key.
remove the spark plug. Now we should remove the exhaust, but not the whole exhaust because we just need to get it a little bit sideways so we can slide the cylinder of the, the cylinder block. So for that we will remove the springs and just the first exhaust rubber mount. For that we will need 10 millimeter socket. Now, remove the springs. Just slide off the exhaust from the from the engine mount, take it off and put it here down and now we have the complete access to the cylinder so we can slide it off the studs. Now we can proceed further with removing the cylinder head nuts with a 13 millimeter wrench. Always in cross pattern. Now easy slide the head off. Be sure that you will not lose the washers. Take the o-ring off. And now easy, very easy, slide the cylinder off. We have the complete access to the piston. Let's put this aside. So what I like to do when I reach to this point is just take everything out and clean. Be sure that everything is good, uh, is not excessively worn. I will give you some hints about that as well. So now that we have the piston exposed, we can take it out. We will take the safety C-clip out slide the piston pin and then take the piston out. So taking the C-clip out is just easy as this. Put it aside. Guys, just a short tip. When you will work with the engine installed onto the frame, this will be kind of an inclined upward position. So be sure that you will fix a rag or something here into the crankcase. So this little safety and whatever you will take will not fall into the crankcase. And then you may need to open the whole engine. So just a little bit of safety and you will not regret it. Now let's slide the pin, piston pin off. This should be relatively easy if the piston pin is not excessively worn. Yes, it was as easy as I remembered. Now, left and right movements. Just slide it out. Now, just slide it out easy and the piston will go out. Take care about the needle bearing. Now we can inspect the cone rod and the cone rod looks really, really, really good. We can inspect the big bearing play, which is radial play. There is none that I can feel. A little bit of axial play is allowed, so this is okay. Not radial play. Well, this is good. We will just need to come back, clean it and install everything back together. Now we will focus on the piston. We can proceed with the installation of the new piston rings. They come from Vitorazzi as a set of two piston rings chromed. Now it's very important that you install the piston rings in the correct position. What that means is that they have an up part and a down part. 
how you can identify that part actually if you look in the profile of the piston ring you can see that the bottom part is flat and the upper part is at an angle so the angle part is the upper part and another sign that you're installing them correctly when you close the piston rings you can see that you have a little notch here like a little rounded notch which will need to match these very pins these locking pins so when the piston is moving up and down repeatedly the piston will not turn into the channel and then one end of it will be caught into exhaust port or intake port or whatever for installing the piston rings what i like to do is just take the piston put it here insert it like this as much as it can go then take the other end and then just slide it into its channel so you see now the the rings are moving freely into the channel that tells us that there are no, there is no carbon and the, the channel is free and when you compress the ring it will be locked by this pin so it can actually fully close when you will install the cylinder back onto the engine now we have the first ring installed let's install the second ring exactly the same put the ring on the top go here press it a little bit don't force it into the channel then take the other end easy and easy easy make the way help the piston ring to go into its way so now we have the piston piston rings installed what i like to do immediately after i install them is just to use the same oil as we use for mixing the, the gasoline take a little bit of oil and grease everything it will help us big time later take some oil don't be cheap put as much as you want it will need the first initial lubrication because the parts will be cleaned and uh, grease free so now even in these holes everywhere put some oil in it so now we are sure that rings and everything are lubed take the piston pin a little bit of oil again and insert it the same way that you remove the other one from this side it should go very easy and don't insert it too much because we will need to put it over the condrod over the bearing and then slide it and close everything together put it aside we will focus now on preparing the cylinder for installation and this is the cylinder what we need to do is to remove the base gasket and please be sure that you will have at least one part of the base gasket intact so you can measure it with a caliper that so you will know what gasket you will use from the set that Vitorazzi is supplying because you have different thicknesses so the cylinder can stay upper and lower over the cylinder block so the squash that means that the distance in between the piston and the cylinder head is around 1.4 millimeters at Vitorazzi recommends so using different thicknesses of the base gasket we actually can adjust this distance in between the piston and the cylinder head now let's remove the base gasket of course you know that I like cutter blades I will use cutter blade find the spot okay this is a little bit up and easy try to make your way somehow like this it should go very easy try to be gentle and as soon as you feel like something is wrong and you will start to scratch the cylinder base then stop and watch what you're doing better to measure and watch five times and do it just once so now that we have the gasket off let's find an intact part so that we can measure let's find a good part so the gasket was like this and the part to me that looks like it wasn't cut it or something is this part which corresponds to this part of the gasket we will take the caliper we will be sure that is on zero now we can measure it 
and actually it's 0 0.52, 0 0.5, maybe there are some debris, but I'm sure that this gasket is the, yes, is the 0.5 millimeter. So now you will need to identify and to find the same way the 0.5 millimeter gasket from the set, which I suppose it would be this one. Let me measure it. Yes, is the 0.5 millimeter gasket, so we will use this one. Now let's proceed further with cleaning of the cylinder base where the new gasket will go. Again, please be sure that you will not scratch anyway the cylinder. Okay, enough with the cutter blades. Now let's clean it with some gasoline. Again, this Coach Bright is doing magic. Okay, now that we have the cylinder in the gasoline, be sure that you clean this surface too, where the head goes. Now, let's make sure that we have everything clean and no gasket debris inside the inlet ports or the exhaust port. I don't have the air compressor here. We can be sure that everything is clean. We can visually inspect it. We have no debris. We can and we should inspect the cylinder because as you saw before, the piston has some interesting scratches that I really believe are from some uh, debris ingestion like sand or any other small parts that they're really hard and they can go in between the piston and the cylinder and now let's look at the cylinder itself you see we can see some kind of marks on it but i can feel absolutely nothing with my hand let's put some oil in it this cylinder can be used without any problems for a lot more hours of flying and having fun into the air but the piston will need replacement. For the sake of this video, we will use the same piston, but in the very next video that we will record, I will replace the whole piston and the whole kit for 200 hours maintenance. And uh, then the engine will be ready to go. So the cylinder is ready to be installed, greased. Surfaces where the gasket will come are really clean. So let's go and install everything back together. Now, the first thing we will install will be the roller bearing and the piston onto the crankshaft, onto the conrod. For that, again, some two-stroke oil that we actually use for mixing the gasoline, making sure that everything is lubed. So when we first start the engine, it doesn't run dry, as I will say. So install the roller bearing. And now, if you will look at the piston, you can see somewhere that you have all these marks and uh, diameter and uh, notation of the, the, the piston B, C, D, E, it depends on the diameter. And you have a little arrow which indicate where the exhaust port should be. So the piston should be mounted in a way that this little arrow would indicate and will be exactly in the direction of the exhaust port. So now, as we have the exhaust right here, down, then this little arrow should be like this. So the arrow indicates the exhaust is exactly in the same direction as the exhaust. So now we go with the piston, easy not to touch it to these big studs and bolts and scratch it. And easy, okay, it goes, it went through, insert the piston pin, all the way in, piston is inside, 
good now it's time to insert the safety C clip so this is the safety C clip when installing it again into your engine you should have a little rag installed like this around the con rod so if you will lose this or this will go away it won't go into the engine and you will need to disassemble the engine and so on so on so it can uh, spare you a lot of efforts later and now for inserting the sickly i just like to put it like this and then using the same and then using the same notch it helped us to take it out we will We'll put it back together so now everything is installed and back into the place everything is in no problem now we can clean the surface where the base gasket goes when this engine is very clean no need for any other additional scotch bright cleaning or cutter blade a little trick that helped me a lot over the years is just to put a little bit of sealant just a tiny bit of amount of sealant over the the gasket when installing it and then you are 100 percent sure that you will have absolutely no leaks from this cylinder based gasket so just a little bit of sealant i'm using a victor Renz sealant which is very very good i'm very very satisfied with it i'm using it even in motorcycles and everything i fix just a little bit just make it as thin layer as we can no need for overdoing it because it will just spill out it'll just press it out so there is no need for it a little bit more on this side so this should be perfectly good now install the gasket When installing the cylinder back, be sure that the piston rings, as I told you before, are aligned with the little stoppers in the piston channel and then you can compress them fully. Now you just need to easy install the cylinder like this. Now, from both sides of the cylinder, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but from the both sides of the cylinder, I will compress the piston rings. Be sure that they are closing exactly in the in the in the same spot with the piston channel stopper, and then the second one that I will. Do. and then and then we should be ready to go let's see if everything works as it should no additional friction perfect now cylinder head cylinder head is perfectly cleaned we already done cleaning of the decompressor hole and getting the carbon of the piston and the head in the previous video insert the new head o-ring be sure that it will stay there 
while you will insert the head and from this point the whole thing goes very simple it's just installing back in the reverse order that you took it out a little bit of oil so we can torque the balls to the proper torque It's a bit of Loctite in the nuts. Using a torque wrench, set it up to 18 Newton meters which should be exactly this toward the head we already covered that in a previous video you can find the link in the description down below in slow and easy steps I will go as close as I can to the specified torque always in cross pattern Now checking again, checking again, the head is torqued, now proceed with the installation of the exhaust back, let's put it back together, it's not that hard, take it from here, put the engine rubber mount into the hole, then slide the whole thing over the bros bushing so when tightening down the exhaust rubber mount be sure that the rubber mount doesn't twist because it can do that and it will have unwanted tension in it so we have another video about replacing the exhaust rubber mount and if you're not sure about your way of doing it then you can check that as well and do it the right way now that this is tightened we can proceed with the installation of the springs So, I'm done. Springs are in place. Please don't forget about the security cable that you need to install. For the purpose of this video, I will not install it because in the next 10 minutes, I will take it off again for the video in which I will change and I will replace the piston. So, let's consider it to be done. The next step would be installing the cooling shroud, again, just a reverse order of disassembling it. A little bit of Loctite, I just love to use this Loctite, it never failed me, so it's a very simple piece of equipment that every single guy that works with screws should have, good. Of course, we have a video about the installation of the cooling shroud as well. The video in which we are retorquing and checking the cylinder head bolt torque. And it is explained very well there. Check it if you are unsure about how to do it properly. So the Basically, it's just one washer on top, one washer below. And then torque it with a torque wrench, so you're sure that all four bolts are having the same torque. Now using the torque wrench, this time set it up to 25 newton meters. One, two, three, four. Checking again. Good. 
good. All we need to do is, is install the spark plug back. I know we have a video about the spark plug and how to properly replace and retighten the spark plug as well. So now that the last step was done, we can consider the replacement of the piston rings, piston pin and piston pin roller bearing complete. So we are good to go for the next 100 hours. So guys, as you could see, it's not that hard. So the only difference in between the 100 hour service and the 200 hour service is just you need to replace the piston itself. Everything else is exactly the same. Thank you very much for staying with us. Please be sure that you hit the like and subscribe button because now we will go even more deep inside into the engine and we will change the crankshaft bearings, the seals and everything you need to do at 200 hours. So we will cover this as well. And please share the video with your friends. Maybe some of your friends will find this video really helpful as now is winter and, and some of you for sure will start to make the maintenance that is required. So thank you very much. See you in the next one. Ciao.